carry on with the answers. So first one, supply from Mumbai, the registered office to Goa, location will be Mumbai and tax IGST. Delhi fixed establishment is in Delhi, supply from Delhi to Chandigarh, location will be the location of the fixed establishment and tax will be again IGST. Mumbai to Nagpur, Mumbai being the registered office and tax will be CGST or CST within the same state. Delhi, no fixed establishment, registered office is in Mumbai, so it will be location will be the supply will be Delhi and it will be again IGST. So this these are the answers. I hope everyone has got it correct. So now let's proceed. A person with multiple business verticals in a state will need to obtain a separate registration for each business vertical. Now what is business vertical? First you will write down, go to the next page and you have a space there. Write, uh, the, first you write the def definition of business vertical. Business vertical means Business vertical means a distinguishable component of an enterprise, a distinguishable component of an enterprise that is engaged. Business vertical means a distinguishable component of an enterprise that is engaged in the supply of individual goods or services that is engaged in the supply of individual goods or services supply of individual goods or services or a group of related goods or services or a group of related goods or services which is subject to risks and returns which is subject to risks and returns that are different from those of other business verticals that are different from those of other business verticals yes i repeat so a distinguishable component of an enterprise that is engaged in the supply of goods or services that, that is engaged in the supply of individual goods or services or a group of related goods or services which is subject to risks and returns which is subject to risks and returns that are different from those of other business verticals that are different from those of other business verticals. Next write down the factors to be considered. Factors to be considered. In determining. Whether a particular unit, whether a particular unit is a distinguishable component, or you can write and don't write distinguishable component, it's a um, separate business vertical unit. Factors to be considered to identify whether a particular unit of an enterprise is a separate business vertical. Particular unit of an enterprise is a separate business vertical. First one, it must be a distinguishable component. It must be a distinguishable component 
being capable of being transferred being capable of being transferred or to function without affecting any other business of that person so it must be a distinguishable component being capable of being transferred or function without affecting any other business of that person of that person meaning the group a, a business unit cannot be a business vertical a business unit cannot be a business vertical merely based on merely based on geographical differentiation merely based on geographical differentiation so if a particular group has a branch which is dependent on one branch of that group for its inputs will that be its business vertical no it cannot function independent of the other group so it needs supply from that particular unit of that group so suppose see suppose the uh, company xyz it has two units unit a and unit b unit b cannot function until and unless it receives its inputs from unit a so unit b can not be the business vertical of company xyz because it cannot function independently so the next point will make it more clear the supplies made by one business vertical unit the supplies at this example only i am giving it in plain simple english okay what did i say the supply, the, the supplies made by one business vertical unit the supplies made by one business vertical unit should be a individual goods or services individual goods or services or a group of related goods or services individual goods or services or a group of related goods or services and subject to risks this is b and subject to risks and returns subject to risks risks and returns different from those of other business verticals different from those of other business verticals okay so if may if any supplies are being made between any two business verticals they will be deemed as taxable supplies and gst has to be paid on it so we return to the previous page who is a casual taxable person so if you occasionally make supplies of goods or services as a principal or an agent or any other capacity in a taxable territory where gst applies but where you don't have a fixed place of business So as per GST, you will treat it as a casual taxable person. So you are making a supply from a particular area. You do not have any fixed establishment or fixed place of business in that particular area, and you are occasionally making supply. Not that you are continuously making supply. You occasionally make supply from that particular area. Then you will treat it as a casual taxable person. So definition we have seen in the previous class. Now non-resident taxable person. when you occasionally make supply of goods and services as a principal or agent or in any other capacity in a taxable territory where gst applies but you don't have a fixed fixed place of business in india 
then you will be non resident taxable person this definition also you have read in the previous class but regarding registration i have put this in the registration also because it's applicable here okay now you will read registration and transfer of business registration after merger amalgamations agriculturist provisions cancellation of registration and persons requiring registration without threshold limit of 20 or 10 lakhs you have 5 minutes read these points done so registration and transfer of business where a business carried on by a taxable person registered under this act is transferred whether on account of succession or otherwise to another person as a going concern underline going concern the transferee or the successor shall be liable to be registered with effect from the date of such transfer or succession the first point which you have to see is that the business which is, is carried on by a taxable person who is registered under this act. Now it is transferred on account of succession or otherwise. So whether it is transferred as succession or you can, can be transferred not on account of succession or otherwise. To any other person the business is transferred as a going concern. So business should be transferred as a going concern. Then the transferee or the successor, in case it is uh, transferred on account of succession, it is the successor. They shall be liable to be registered with effect from the date of such transfer or succession. Underline. So the registration will be from effect with effect from the date of transfer or succession. <coughs> Clear this one? Okay, next one. Registration after merger or amalgamation. In case of transfer pursuant to a sanction of a scheme or an arrangement for amalgamation or demerger of two or more companies by an order of a high court or tribunal, transferees shall be liable to be registered with effect from the date on which registrar of companies issues a certificate of incorporation. So first, you will underline pursuant to a sanction or scheme or an arrangement by an order of a high court. Next point, by an order of a high court and date on which ROC issues certificate of incorporation. So these are the important points. So if there is any transfer in order to give effect to an order of a high court, an order of the high court is uh, regarding the sanctioning uh, regarding the sanctioning of a scheme of an amalgamation or, amal or to demerger of two or more companies, then the transferee company. So first of all, it should there should be a transfer to give effect into a sanction of an high court regarding the um, arrangement or regarding the amalgamation or the demerger of two or more companies. Then the transferee shall be liable to be get, um, registered, registered from the date on the date on which ROC issues the certificate of incorporation. So they're basically these things first of all it, it should be an order of the high court should be there and transfer should be to give an effect to the order of the high court regarding the amalgamation of two companies. So two or more companies should be amalgamated and the high court should have sanctioned the scheme or the arrangement which have been entered into between two or more companies regarding the amalgamation or demerger. And transfer should be in person to such uh, to um, person to such sanction of the high court. Then transferee company or whatever transferee will be liable to get itself registered with the effect from the date on which ROC should certificate certificate of incorporation. So suppose we have two companies A and B, they form an arrangement to amalgamate into a single company C and the amalgamation scheme has been sanctioned by the High Court. So C will be required to get itself registered from the date ROC issues the certificate of incorporation to C. Yeah. 
next point is agriculturists they do not register agriculturists has been uh, given an exemption from registration to the extent of supply of produce out of cultivation of land so if it is only engaged in some, um, supply of produce out of the cultivation of land then agriculturists need not register but if the agriculturist is also engages in any other activity other than uh, supplying the cultivation of the land then in uh, the produce uh, arising out of the cultivation of land in that case agriculture the such person has to get itself registered if you are if he is engaged in any other activity also next point is important cancellation of registration now who can cancel the registration proper officer either on his own motion or on the basis of an application filed by the taxpayer or legal heir of the taxpayer now what are the reasons of cancellation all these points you should know first one transfer of business or discontinuation of business if business is transferred then the cancellation of the original business the transfer it gets cancelled register uh, sorry that registration of the original the or the transfer gets cancelled because transfer is to take registration as you have seen earlier or if the business is discontinued business is closed down then registration would be cancelled change in the constitution of the business if the business constitution change then also there will be cancellation of registration constitution being the form of the business whether it's a partnership or a company or a proprietorship if there is change in that constitution of the business then registration will be also cancelled persons are no longer liable to be registered in section 22 or 24 so 22 24 there are the uh, provisions requiring registration so if person is no longer liable to be registered then the registration will be cancelled now after that you write down in brackets except in cases of voluntary registrations so except when the or you can write except when he, uh, he is voluntarily registered except where the person is voluntarily registered so if person is no longer liable to involuntary registration even though you are not liable, liable to be registered you get yourself registered so in, in this provision that of cancellation will not apply to voluntary registrations so yeah after that person is not no longer liable to be registered section 22 24 after that you uh, put a bracket and write down except when he is voluntarily registered or the person is voluntarily registered except when the person is voluntarily registered okay so next point is registered taxable person contravenes provisions of the act so if you have contravening any registered taxable person has contravened the provisions of the act registration would be cancelled composition supplier has not furnished returns for three consecutive tax periods so the composition supplier he has not furnished his returns for consecutive three tax periods his registration will be cancelled other suppliers other than the composition supplier if he has not furnished returns for six consecutive months okay non commencement of business so within six months from the date of registration by person who is registered voluntarily So, if you are registered voluntarily and you do not commence business within six months from the date of the registration, your registration will be cancelled. Cancellation can be retrospectively in cases of frauds, willful misstatements, or suppression of facts. So, your registration can be cancelled with effect from an earlier date in case. of any frauds or willful misstatements while obtaining registration or if you need suppress any facts now before cancelling the registration proper officer has to give a notice of hearing and an opportunity of being heard to the ssc has to be also given so these were the points regarding cancellation of registration which is important okay you can write one more point here इस पेस आई हो या नीचे में लिख लो नीचे में जगह है कैंसिलेशन डी सीजीएसटी एक्ट कैंसिलेशन अंडर सीजीएसटी एक्ट विल बी डीम्ड कैंसिलेशन कैंसिलेशन अंडर सीजीएसटी एक्ट 
will be deemed cancellation under SGST Act and vice versa. Cancellation under CGST Act will be deemed cancellation under SGST Act and vice versa. Okay, right, one more point. Uh, the li liability to pay tax, liability to pay tax before the date of cancellation, liability to pay tax before the date of cancellation will not be affected. Liability to pay tax before the date of cancellation will not be affected. If you have any liability before the, your registration is cancelled, you have to pay that liability. Right, one more point. Any registered taxable person whose registration is cancelled, any registered taxable person whose registration is cancelled. may apply to the proper officer may apply to the proper officer for revocation may apply to the proper officer for revocation of cancellation of the registration May apply to the proper officer for revocation of cancellation of reg registration for revocation of cancellation of registration within 30 days within 30 days from the date of service of the cancellation order within 30 days from the date of service of the cancellation order. So you can make an application to a proper officer for the revocation of this cancellation order if the proper officer has passed a cancellation order. And then the proper officer, he will uh, go through the revocation request and he can either cancel the, uh, the cancel your registration or he can revoke the cancellation order. This was a very short provision. So 30 days time period has been given. Okay. So next one, revocation talks about this. If a person supplies so this one I have told you, I have dictated you, it was not there in your study matter. Okay. So if a person supplies from two different units, single registration shall be granted per state unless separate business verticals. Separate registration for, for all firms are operating out of a single premise. If in a single premise or a single building there are different firms, separate registration shall be taken by all such firms. That's obvious because it's pan based registration. No centralized registration for service providers. So centralized registration provisions which existed in the erstwhile laws of service tax and excise. Service tax uh, is no longer exists now. So there is no centralized registration for service providers. No transfer of input tax credit unless registered as an input service distributor. So if you have to need to transfer the input tax credit, it can be done only by an input service distributor. So a registration as an input service distributor has been taken. You have already seen above uh, that if you, you have to uh, register, register yourself separately as an input service distributor. Separate registration for input service distributors is required. Okay, now 
persons who require registration without threshold limit of 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs. So persons require registration without threshold limit of 20 or 10 lakhs. Okay. Tick. Five minutes break and then we will continue. So we have registration is one. Application details, some case studies. Not much is left. Okay, we will come back after a short break of five minutes. Okay. <laughs> 